What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahone here with Tricky Jim at Full Grip Games. Going to be playing a game on PTCGO today, and today I've got my Charizard deck. I have had my butt handed to me a number of times with this Charizard deck on the PTCGO ladder, so I am excited to actually get behind the wheel of the Charizard deck and try it for myself. Now, a lot of the lists that I've seen online are playing the Jirachi engine. I think that that's a very good engine for the Charizard deck to play, but I've seen a bunch of different versions trying different things as far as how do you stream Charizards consistently. I've seen Charizard decks try the Meganium thing going on in order to get Meganium's ability to stream Charizard back to back to back to back. I've also seen Alola Ninetales GX as an option to go get yourself Rare Candy, Timer Ball, and things like that. Now, Lost March should be a pretty tough matchup for us. As far as non-GX versus non-GX deck goes, I'm not sure that we can actually trade Charizards with this thing, but I am certainly going to try my best here, okay? So we did prize our one Alolan Vulpix, but I do have a Ditto who can evolve into different things. That's nice. Uh, if I want to go get a Ninetales, but since we're playing against this Lost March deck, Feeling like I don't actually want to do that. So I will get myself another Jirachi and then just Stellar Wish. We'll see what we get here. A Guzma is pretty good. Also a Nest Ball is pretty good. I feel like I kind of want Guzma though. That way I could just use another Stellar Wish. Here, turn one. That's fine. Yep, we'll just do that. I've got my one Charmander down. I'm looking for probably a another one. Let's see, Pokemon Communication's good. Lily's good. I think we just go and grab myself a Lily so that I can have a draw supporter here turn two. That would be most excellent. And then we'll Ultra Ball away a couple Fire Energy. Feels a little bad, but we do need another Charmander here for sure. Ultra Ball definitely feels not great in this deck, but you kind of have to play it because Pokemon communication is just not always reliable in this deck. Like, I want to keep this Charizard in my hand because I'm looking for rare candy for the turn two Charizard here. So we don't actually want to do that, right? We don't want to sacrifice uh, that Charizard in order to get another Charmander. So that's a little bit tough. It's going to be tough as well if this Jirachi goes down because I need to find the rare candy. So that's another consideration that I have to make. Do I promote the Jirachi here and hope that I hit switch or a skateboard? Or do I promote the Charizard and just say, you know what? I will hit my rare candy off the Lily for four or five. Tough call, but my opponent doesn't have the attack. So we're in the clear for sure. And I don't have to sit here wondering. I'm going to Lily first and see what we get. Double a skateboard is very good. And then I can just Stellar Wish and hope we hit the rare candy. We do not, unfortunately. So it's another turn of setting up, but that's okay. My opponent is not doing much of anything. So I'm kind of confident that we'll be able to buff this one out here. I guess, yeah, no, I don't even have the switch, so I can't like uh, a skateboard, all that. This dude's not weak to fire, so I can't actually, you know, hit him with Charmeleon. It's just none of that's an option. Okay, cool. We'll just get ourselves another Charmander here and continue forward. I guess I could get myself, right, the Ditto Prism Star, and then we have the option to go to Ninetales next turn. Sure, why not? I don't think it's a horrible idea. And then, you know, I don't want to give my opponent the GX, but if it's a matter of setting up or not setting up, I'll probably take it. Let's get another, another one, another Nest Ball. Sure, or I could get Guzma, go that way. Mm. I also kind of want to Ultra Ball, right? Because I feel like Ultra Balling here, get myself a Charmeleon, then I guarantee myself the Charizard. So that's kind of good. We'll get the Nest Ball here and then just Ultra Ball away, Nest Ball, and probably Ninetales. And yeah, that way I just will guarantee myself the Charizard without having to put the Ninetales into play. I like that. We'll go Charmeleon. I've seen some lists that aren't playing Charmeleon. I guess you don't actually have to if you are playing the Meganium engine, which is another way to play this deck. The Meganium just seemed a little bit sketch to me, but I guess that could make sense too. And Jirachi could set up the Meganium engine like really quickly. So that is a valid option for sure. I would just take out the Ditto and my Alola Ninetales really 
and you could just play a 101 Meganium, which could work out for you, right? So that is something to think about when building this deck. Do you want to play the Nine Tails? Do you want to play the Meganium? My opponent bops my Cynthia there with the Tromboni. That hurts. They've got two, four, six. So they're going to be doing 120, 100 minus the 24 resistance there into my Jirachi. But we finally got an attacker up and ready to go. But unfortunately, we are behind one prize now. So it could be tough for me to make this game happen, right? I guess I should have uh, Stellar Wish, and I could have seen if I hit the Rare Candy there. If I hit the Rare Candy, then I could just go do that, but it's all good. Uh, now that I'm, you know, now that I'm here, it's like I should have just waited till after the Cynthia to do the Stellar Wish. But, you know, we're still learning our order of operations here with this deck. I could just attach that and then go here. I don't actually need to, oh, it's a beautiful hand. I don't need to go and use my ability this turn. I already have it all, so we're good to go on that front too. And we'll just retreat and hit this thing with continuous blaze ball. I don't need to roaring resolve. Let's see, put two damage, if you search your deck for an attachment to this Pokemon. Yeah, I don't need to do that. We're just gonna continuous blaze ball here for 130. And I do have to discard those energies. Fortunately, I do play the Brock's Grit, which allows me to shuffle energy and Pokemon back into the deck. As of right now, that's my only way to get energy back. That could end up being not enough, as I'm finding out. But this is my first draft of the deck, so we're just doing what we can to see if this deck works. It's been working really good against me, that's for sure. Whenever I play against this deck on BTCGO, they have everything they need all the time. And sure enough, my opponent whiffs the knockout here, which is glorious, because that means that I can use my Roaring Resolve here and get two on there without knocking myself out, which is going to allow me to swing this matchup back in my favor. Beautiful, okay. I think before, let's see, I don't actually want a Brox Grit yet. I think I'll save the Brox Grit for afterwards, and then I'll just Timer Ball and, yep, get Double Tails, so that's what Timer Ball does. Reads, you know, flip two coins, get both tails, yeah, go from there. I'll do this. I'm only going to have 10 hit points left, but it does not matter. And then I'll Brox Grit them next turn back into play. I might as well Roaring Resolve here too and get those two fires out the deck. Thin the deck a little bit more. That is excellent. And we'll continue his plays ball for knockout here. I'll Brox Grit next turn once I have all six fires there and get them back. I love that Brox Grit is a card in standard format again. I think it's just such a nice supporter to have at your disposal. If you don't really want to play maybe Rescue Stretcher and Energy Recycler, you could just play Brox Grit. So I do think it's very valuable for that. Though I do think that this deck may need to play an Energy Recycler <laughs> or a Rescue Stretcher. I just was like a little bit greedy and I was like, I'll play Brox Grit. It's like both, right? <laughs> so it might be a little bit greedy to say that, but it's all good. We are going to Stellar Wish first because we want the Rare Candy, which is finally right there. Beautiful. And then we'll Brox Grit to shuffle the energy back into the deck. Order of Operations. You did it, Andrew. Congrats. So the reason that we Stellar Wish first is because our, le our deck is less diluted, right? Less diluted with stuff. I guess I could have technically Nest Balled here, you know, to thin the deck even more before the Stellar Wish. Oh, you almost did it right, Andrew. Very good. And then we'll Brox Grit, and we'll shuffle all those fire energies, and then we probably want, I guess we could do three fire energies. In the, eh, no, I think I'll just go with the fire energies. At this point, I'm so far ahead. I think with four prizes remaining that I should probably be able to get there with just, I'll, show, I'll throw Charizard back into. We'll do that. Five energies and the Charizard back into the deck. We can Roaring Resolve here, thin the deck a little bit more. And I might run out of fire energy. I don't think so. Eh, I guess everybody's only gonna take, uh, you know, two fires to knock out. So we do have to be careful, I would say. I am probably playing a dangerously low amount of fire in this deck, but I am also playing against a non-GX deck here. So it is gonna kind of put my fire count to the test since I have to take six non-GX prizes. Usually you're going to be able to expedite the game by taking a big GX knockout somewhere along the line, but that's just not what we have going on right here. <laughs> not the case at all. 
here in this matchup. We are just having to burn two fire energy for every single knockout. I am only playing like 12 or 13, I think 13 fire energy right now. That might need to be closer to 15. Like I said, you guys are seeing my very first game with Charizard here, and the deck is actually doing what it's set out to do, which I'm pretty impressed by. But if this Lost March deck had just set up a little bit more consistently, then we might have been in some trouble. See, my opponent is playing Sky Pillar, right? Prevent all effects of opponent's attacks, including damage done to bench Pokemon. That's probably for the Ultra Necrozma matchup, if I had to guess, since that Sky Scorching Light is just a crucial pain for the Lost March deck to deal with. Also good against Giratina, whose Distortion Door ability can snipe 10 damage onto your Jump Bluffs in preparation for that very destructive Sky Scorching Light. We're gonna get let loose, that's okay. This hand is actually much better than my last hand, and I'm pretty stoked on that. I'm playing a pretty high count of Lily in this deck. I'm playing like four, because I think that turn one Lily with Jirachi is just the, that's the all-star setup. That's exactly what you want, turn one, almost every single game. We're getting let loose again, come on, dude. I liked that hand, <laughs> just let me keep it. This hand is much worse, but that's okay. I can manually attach uh, to one of my bench Charmanders, I guess, but I might not even want to do that because we may need all of this energy at our disposal to try and finish this game off. Three more knockouts, all we need. Let's get it. We've got Jirachi, but we've got nothing else in this hand, so let's tell our wish and see what we can get. Pokecom is pretty good. Guzma is pretty good. I think Ultra Ball is pretty good, too. We can get ourselves another Charizard with that. Though I don't actually want to discard many, if any, of these cards from my hand. So I think I will grab the Ultra Ball there just to have it. And then I guess, how many rare candies have I used? Just one. I could use another one here. That would be fine. I don't want to Ultra Ball away the fire, and I don't want to Ultra Ball away one of my rare candies. So I'm kind of stuck. I think I'll wait one turn. That might be a little bit greedy, but I'm going to do it. We'll just retreat into this Charizard, manually attached to that Charmander, and we'll continue his Blaze Ball here. I want to Ultra Ball away the Choice Band and one other card, just none of these cards that I am currently looking at. So we'll knock this dude out and see if my opponent can respond with another energy. Fortunately, we did get another fire there off the prize. That alleviates the pressure a little bit on the energy front. I only need four more energy to finish the game. I think I should have like three or four left in deck. So we're cool for sure. We definitely got it. It's just tight, right? It is tight. I couldn't afford to like ultra ball away these two more fires. That's definitely a no-go. But I'm thinking that maybe just one energy recycler. The Brock's Grit obviously was great. I needed the Brock's Grit or else we weren't going to be able to win this game. I'm thinking one more energy recycler, though, or one energy recycler in total would help me in my path to trying to make this deck work for sure. Also, the Alolan Ninetales would have been good to help me get a speedier setup. If maybe I was playing against a GX deck, I wouldn't have cared so much about having the Alolan Ninetales on my bench, but it could have just for sure lost me the game against this Lost March deck. So I couldn't really afford to put it down here, and that caused us to get a little bit of a slower start. We'll gladly go Stellar Wish here and see what we get. Lily is a good card to have. I don't really need Rare Candy or a Skateboard, so we'll take the Lily. And then I'll just Ultra Ball away the Guzma and the Choice Band for a Charizard. And we've got two Charizards left in deck. It's exactly what we need in order to finish this game off. So we are just very close. We're cutting it very close on our resources here. But playing against a deck like Lost March is going to cause you to cut it close on your resources. So that's fine. I don't think it's necessarily a problem with the deck. That's just a nature of the beast. And wow, okay, this actually could be kind of devastating um, because I don't think that I can, I don't think I have any energy left in deck, right? I think I have one. All right, that actually is fine. That'll work <laughs> because I was going to say, if I'm actually stuck with all my energy in hand, I won't be able to Roaring Resolve for game. But we got there with Charizard. Let's roll it one more time. Uno Mouse and see what we can uh, 
see what we can do here in one more game. I think this deck is a ton of fun to play. I put Charizard on my top 10 cards from Team Up, right? I was really amped on the card at first, and then all my friends told me it was bad, and I was like, I don't know, maybe he's not as good as I thought he was. But then I started getting my butt kicked by it on PTCGO, and I saw my friend JW losing to it on PTCGO too. He was always talking about Zorks, the best deck I've ever seen, and then I watched him on stream lose to the Charizard deck with his Zorark deck, and I was like, aha, yes, that deck you said was bad, just beat you, JW, so whose deck is bad now? Pretty funny stuff. We'll see what we could do here in one more game with Charizard. We're playing against Picaram, finally a deck that has some more GX Pokemon in it, though I am a little bit scared. With Picaram going first, they could just get a turn two full blitz, and that's always very, very frightening, right? Because a turn two full blitz is going to be a lot to deal with as the Charizard deck, especially with no sort of other draw card in my hand right now. So we're definitely hoping for a Lily or something like that, or even just another Jirachi Ultra Ball, something like that, off of this Stellar Wish, so that then I can go in and, uh, and draw a ton of cards and get an explosive turn one set up. Pikaram has been a deck that I'm, I'm back and forth on. I think that the card has a ton of potential. It's very, very strong. It's obviously insane when you get it to set up. And then there's some, car some games where I feel like I'm just a little underwhelmed by it. It's good, and then it's also just so heavy. It's a lot to set up, and you really want your turn one hands to look a certain way with this deck. And that's why you play a whole bunch of cards like Lily, Acro Bike, and the works to try and get your hands to look that way. Turn one let loose, a, hey, you know what, dude? I've been high rolled by a turn one let loose so many times on PTCGO in the last 24 hours. And I don't think, I don't even, I didn't know that like Peak Rom lists were playing like all these uh, Lele and Marshadow. That's cool, like I get it, that's fine. You know, I just, uh, I never expect it in the Pico Rom deck. Let's go and Lily for just five here. I'm cool with it. We got ourselves Charmander and a Stellar Wish. I think I'll Stellar Wish first and see what we get. Cynthia, very good. I think I can also afford to potentially Ultra Ball into another Jirachi and go from there. That arc can Ultra Ball for a Ditto could be good as well. I think we want to get rid of the Guzma and a Charizard could be totally fine, I think. And I guess we could get a Lolan Vulpix. Ooh, that could be good. And then I could Beacon turn one. Beacon would allow me to get, I guess, a Charmeleon and another, hmm, it's a tough call for sure. The Ninetales would allow me to set up. I actually don't want to put the Ninetales down because I know that deck is going to be able to take advantage of me putting the Ninetales up, right? I think I'll, I'll just get this Jirachi here. And then we're just going to retreat into my other one. Yeah, and we'll see what we get off this Stellar Wish. If it's like a Rare Candy would have been good. Choice Band is good too. I'm fine with it. And then, you know, we just hope that this Jirachi doesn't get knocked out next turn. That would be pretty good. What does this do? Ember, 30 damage. I could bop him for 60 with a choice ban. Seems suboptimal, though. <laughs> I think I want to save these uh, Charmanders as much as I can. So we'll, we'll pass here and hope that we find a rare candy off of one of these Stellar Wishes coming up. I do have Cynthia, Choice Band, Charizard, so really, I just want to find a, please, a rare candy here. Then I could go Choice Band, I can attach Return, I can then also Roaring Resolve, and we would be doing, I guess, 260 damage. I could knock this thing out on turn two if my hand just looks right. Now what I don't want to do is have to knock out a Zapdos, and I'm pretty sure that's probably what <laughs> what is about to happen here. But no, actually yes, my opponent is playing their entire hand down for a full blitz. So let's go Charizard, come on, we need this 
to work out. I'm sure they're about to full blitz all three energy onto the Pika Ze uh, Zekrom, and then if I knock this thing out, they will scoop, dude. Come on. I just need a rare candy, and I'm confident we can get it. Oh, my gosh. They've got a one-card hand. The Greed. Let's go, deck. Please, please, just please, please give me a, a rare candy right here. Oh, my gosh. How do... Uh, okay. We were so close. Let's see. I think I Ultra Ball here. And then uh, I'm going full greed on this play because I think that it's worth it. Uh, I'm going to Ultra Ball away the Guzma and the Charizard. And then I am going to get myself another. My other Jirachis are prized. Okay, that's it. I can't actually... I can't be full, full greed here. We need to just hope for the best. I was going to say, I was thinking about getting another Jirachi and then switching into it because that could have, uh, or like retreating into it and then going for the rare candy and then switching. Like that would have been very good if I had hit it. But alas, here we are. I uh, just have to Cynthia. And I mean, I could technically hit everything off of this. Just the odds are very small. Yeah, so we did not. It's all good, I guess. I'll just retreat, attach for turn, and beacon. Um, but at this point, I think we just lose because my opponent is going to be able to GX and just take out two cards here. So we just missed it, dude. I was so close. I just needed rare candy off of that, and we would have had it. I guess I should have put down... I think turn one, I needed to put down the Ditto or the Vulpix and then give myself the out to go into Alola Ninetales to find myself the Rare Candy. That's just, like, the route I needed to take. I just figured with enough, like, stellar wish, I would just find it, right? I thought I would just find it. But they're going to GX. They're going to hit my Charmander here. When they hit my Charmander, I think that we can't win because they're going to take two prizes. They'll take out the Vulpix, and they'll take out this guy. Where I actually should have technically attached the fire energy here because that would have allowed me to um, then still hit the combo, I guess, to do 260 damage off of the uh, off of the attack there. So that's just a real bummer. Yeah, goodbye, Charmander. Oh, 170 damage to my Charmander, dude. Oh, it hurts. Ah, oh, that's that's brutal. Yep, not much I could do there. I just was very close. Just needed the rare candy, and we would have had it, dude. We would have had it. I think that I have to just hope that my opponent doesn't have Guzma there, and then eventually take this thing out. Uh, I will go here, and then let's uh, stellar wish and see what we get there. Sure enough, here are some rare candies on deck in case I wanted a rare candy now. Right, that's all good. And then I think, what, I could just, uh, oh, I could evolve this Ditto. I guess we probably evolve the Ditto here. And then I can charge up to my Charizard, sure, and go from there. I don't actually want to let this, <laughs> I don't want to let this Jirachi get knocked out. I kind of can't actually, so I'll uh, Roaring Resolve and go get two Fire Energies like that, and then... I guess we're done with this Alolan Ninetales. It's never happening. And we'll, uh, sure, my guy. Now, now is your time, Charmander. You can, uh, you know, set this guy to a little bit less that I need to take him out for a game. Yeah, we'll do 30 damage. That's fine. Go get him, Charmander. Yikes. I can't believe how close we were and just fell short. You know, always, like, hindsight is twenty twenty. Yeah, if we had, uh... You know, we ended up drawing into the Ultra Ball instead of the Rare Candy, so the Alola Ninetales ended up being a better play than the uh, than the additional Charmanders there. But that's that's all good. Early on there, it was close, and I think the fact that we had an option to do 260 damage on turn two, like, that's a lot of pressure. Going second against Pikaram is not easy. The fact that we had, they got a turn two full blitz, we almost had a turn to 260 damage if we had just found a rare candy. There's not much more that you can ask from from your deck. And I hope that my internet actually comes back because it says that it's failing now. So that's a little bit sketch. But uh, we're back in the game. That's sweet. 
there's not much more that you can ask from from your you know your stage two deck. What more can you really ask for from this thing? I think here we just take the knockout, right? But they're gonna get the full blitz onto another thing, which means that they're pretty much geared up and ready to roll here. We have to promote our Charizard. We will take three prizes though, and we have a Cynthia. So we're actually not like totally out of the game, <laughs> as crazy as that is. I could just Roaring Resolve here and just get two energy on this thing. Then I need all four of those energies onto this Charmeleon here on the bench for sure. So we'll do that and then let's just Cynthia and see what we get. Uh, the crazy, crazy thing about this deck is that we're not totally out yet, right? We're just, we're just not. We could do it. We've got a heads. So, oh my gosh, I do need to find that Brock's Grit. You're telling me I'm out of Charizards? Oof, I prized a Charizard. That is horrible for me, but whatever. We'll continue to play ball here for three prizes. And then we might get our Charizard off of, uh, off of the prize here, but unfortunately I needed to Roaring Resolve that one more time in order to give myself the option to do 230 damage to this fella for game. So we just... Uh, you know, I think we were just a little short there of being able to pull this game off. We'll be able to do 210 damage to this PKRM, but not 240. So close. Uh, unbelievable, really. It's just a couple things. Like, if the Charizard's there, then I Roaring Resolve to the Charizard, and then I Roaring Resolve again and do 260 damage for the per game. I think this deck has a ton of potential. Uh, my opponent was able to get there this game. They did it, you know, they did it. They went first, got a turn two full blitz, it's fine. We were right there. Even whiffing everything, we were right there because this deck does so much damage that it is very hard to contend with. I don't think that there's any way that I could stop this dude from taking his final prize here. Uh, nope, nothing I can do. So you got it, my man. We can't possibly do enough damage to knock you out. But we can uh, at least show you that we were very close, right? We've got our fire energy here. We've got Roaring Resolve. That is about as close as it can get if we had just had that Charizard in the deck, if I hadn't Ultra Balled one away, if I had had my Brock's Grit. So many ifs, ifs, ifs. And that's like, that is the sketchy part about playing this deck is that you just are, you're playing a stage two deck, right? And there's always kind of those feelings when you play a stage two deck that you know sometimes you're just so close to making the game winning play as it is right here we're one energy short you know so we came out just shy of being able to beat the pikaram deck just one more energy and we would have had it you have a good deck sir i feel like we could roll this one more time and see if we can't redeem ourselves that was too close for comfort we're going to we're going to roll it a single more game. So we're one and one right now. See if we can go two and one, make it a positive record here on three games with Charizard. The deck is doing better than I thought, dude. You can just totally nuke some things with this Charizard. It looks like we're playing against a Fire Psychic Colorless deck. This could either be a Charizard Mirror, which I'm not trying to play. Nope. Or it might be a... Uh, Blacephalon deck, in which case I am like totally cool with it being a Blacephalon deck. Let's see what we got. Starting off with the Ditto Prism Star, and I've liked the Ditto in here. I also like the Charmeleons. I feel like it kind of alleviates some of the pressure on finding your rare candies and things like that. We're playing against Blacephalon. This should be a great matchup for us, especially with this opening hand, which is just totally fantastic. We can netball, go get ourselves a Charmander, attach a fire, and the rest is just simple. The Charizard deck, like I said, better than I thought it was. This thing has shown itself to be consistent, shown itself to be hard hitting. We traded with a non-GX deck earlier, but the turn one Kiawe, that's something that I have not seen in quite some time. Definitely a all in play there from my opponent. But they're ready to go. They could deal like 200-something uh, yeah, damage there, turn two. So that's a little bit scary, but I don't mind. The Pokecom there is incredible for us as well because that's going to allow us to just grab another Pokemon and get this Pokecom out my hand so that I can Lily for more cards here, turn one. Really love getting that Jirachi out, so we'll do that. Attach my Fire, attach my Choice Band, 
and get to Lily for seven cards here. The best turn one supporter in the game right now, bar none. We've got a skateboard, so I will gladly just a skateboard into that Jirachi here. And we're expecting that Jirachi to bite the dust, but it's cool because I have just got rare candy Charizard in my hand. And with another Nest Ball, I can gladly get another, um, I guess we probably get ourselves another Charmander. And that's a little bit greedy, but it's cool. I'm cool with it. We don't, we don't mind. We'll get another Charmander here, and that's it. We're ready to go, dude. And this game, we will have the turn to 260 damage if we want it, right? Like, look at it. We got it. Turn two, 260. What deck? No. Okay. I spoke too soon. <laughs> Not to let loose, dude. Oh. And I was greedy. I didn't get... Oh, we're fine. We're fine. We're fine. I didn't get the... Uh, <clears throat> I did not get another Jirachi there. I got a Charmander, so I was feeling myself a little bit like I wasn't going to draw dead. But fortunately, Lily coming in clutch here, totally fine. And we've got the Ditto Prism Star, which can evolve into Ninetales GX, giving us the knockout on this Blacephalon. I really like that. It's a, definitely a good option to have. And I think I will do it. We're just going to Ultra Ball away. Yeah, yeah, whatever. The Lily and that, just to make sure. Yep, here's our Alola Ninetales. And this is where this card is coming in clutch, right here, right when we need it. Um, oh, I needed to retreat first. Gosh, are you serious? Okay, well, live and learn. That's fine. We're going to go ahead and get double, mm, yeah, rare candy and a, oh, and it's, it's never punished, Andrew. Never punished. Here we go. We're going to get the switch and the rare candy. All right, I definitely should have retreated. I forgot that Alola Ninetales only had uh, had a two retreat cost, unfortunately, but it doesn't matter because I was able to get the switch. So we are cruising here, still at Mach 5. Nothing's going to stop us here. I guess, you know, I would have gotten another Nest Ball or something like that to continue setting up, but whatever. We're cool. Cynthia, four or six new cards, and we've got an Escape Board, an Ultra Ball, a Fire Energy to attach for turn. I will gladly evolve this Charmander here and attach a Fire Energy to it. Then I think this next turn I'm cooling. I don't need to Ultra Ball any of these cards away, though I could Ultra Ball away the Guzman and the Escape Board. Uh, I think I'm going to save that for a potential Charizard this next turn. So let's just continue his Blaze Ball here. Take that knockout gladly and our two prizes. Next turn, my opponent is going to have to promote a Blacephalon to take this knockout, and then I'll go to two prizes, which will be crazy, right? Just turn two, boom, 210 damage. Took a knockout on a Blacephalon. Turn three, we're going to take out another one. We've already got everything that we need on board to be able to do it. This Charizard deck is proving to be extremely aggressive and consistent, dude. I thought that there was going to be no way that you could get back-to-back -back Charizards. That was, like, my biggest thing. No way can you stream a basically a stage two Pokemon that effectively only has 130 hit points, right? But the great thing about it is that you it basically acts as a one energy attacher attacker because all you need to do is attach one energy in order to be able to do 210 damage, which is nuts because he gets two energy from the deck himself. So you just build the whole rest of the deck to focus on getting Charizards out and you're just fine. We got Mind Blown coming in here. My opponent is still not going to be on their Naganadel turn next turn, which is great for me because I need them to promote a GX next turn for me to be able to win. I got a couple of things that I need this turn, though. I do need a Charizard. I do need another Charmander in order to kind of roll through the remainder of this game. Jirachi is definitely good. We like that. So let's Ultra Ball away a Guzma and a fire energy. I mean, we definitely need the Charizard. I'm out of Charmanders? Oh, goodness. <laughs> That's not good. All right, we might need to play Rescue Stretcher in this deck, guys. I'm running out of Charmanders. That's fine. It's fine. We're totally fine. Why are we out of Charmanders? Um, it's, uh, it's all good. We're going to figure this out. I'm probably going to need a Brock's Grit or something. Let's... Uh, Roaring Resolve here and get... I, I didn't need to detach that fire, but I was a little tilted about my Charmanders being gone. Where are they at? I don't have that many. I have prized two Charmanders. That's fine. Whatever. All right. Well, Lily, for six. And sure, I guess here, right? There's not anything else 
worth doing. Um, if my opponent is able to, I don't think my opponent will be able to knock this thing out. So I'm actually kind of cool, I guess. And we'll just continue his blaze ball here for knockout on this dude. 230 damage, just absolutely nutso. Now we should pull a Charmander here. Just There just should be one. Yes, there he is. Okay, great. So as long as my opponent does not knock out this Charizard, which unless they pull off Energy Switch, then they're not going to be able to do. They might just have to hit into it with a Naginatel. If they have to hit into it with a Naginatel, I'm fine with that. I will gladly just promote Jirachi or something and try to uh, you know, stabilize my board that way. But if they rip Energy Switch here, that could be bad. They might also GX, which if they GX, then I could win the game with a Continuous Blaze Ball here. So we gotta hope that they just promote Blacephalon and GX. But, ugh, let's see, they haven't used Energy Switch yet, so they could have one. But their list also has a Kiawe, so I don't know if they play Energy Switch or anything like that. Sure enough, we're getting let loose. That Charmander that we had is a goner. And that switch that we had that we really liked too, yep, that's a goner as well. It's all good. I really wish that I had access to that switch because switching into Jirachi is very, very good. But with Lily and Guzma, I'm feeling confident that we could pull off everything that we need to make this game a dub. Let's see, they're going to Mysterious Treasure, B-String. They can't B-String anymore. We've got Guzma. I really just need, oh no, a Muck. <laughs> No, 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 no. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so what do they got here? Are they just going to GX me? Oh, they have no fear whatsoever. Bursting burn, even? I think I have to go. I just have to go for game, right? Uh, I have to try and get everything that I can. Oh, my gosh. How many fire energy do I have left to deck? Four. It's not a lot, but it's enough to win. We just need to draw into one. Let's timer ball here. Uh, I hope it's double tails because I actually don't want any of it. And then I think we just, I think we have to Lily first, hope we hit up a fire, and then it's fine. I'm cool with it. I think we just attach, Roaring Resolve, and go for game, right? 50% chance it works. I don't think that I have any other way. You guys ready for this? Here we go, come on. Yes, we got there. Oh yeah, Charizard taking the dub. 50% chance, half the time it works every time against Confusion. We got there, guys. Incredible, Charizard showing his stuff off. We were able to win two games, lost one to the Picaram deck, but even so, we were just this close uh, to winning against that Picaram deck. So I'm feeling pretty good. It's my first games ever. Those are my first three games ever playing the Charizard deck. So have some mercy on me. Uh, I'm really happy with how the list performed. This is what we were working with. I think Lily was the best supporter in the in the deck, bar none. Jirachi was absolutely incredible. The Alola Ninetales came in clutch. Just don't forget, it's got a retreat cost of two, not one. Uh, so that was really good as well. And then, of course, uh, the rest of the deck kind of just did exactly what it needed to do. I was happy with it. 12 fire seemed like kind of right on the edge as far as like, I wouldn't play any less than 12. I really did like the Brock's Grit, but I feel like I might also want maybe one Rescue Stretcher. I might also want maybe one Energy Recycler. Either way, the Brock's Grit was really good though, and it did what it needed to do. So thank you all so much for watching the video. Make sure to like the video, sub to the channel, ring that bell. You can check me out live on Twitch if you wanna see all my misplays, all my deck creation, and all my uh, good plays as well live. You can check them out on twitch.tv slash tricky gym. If you're looking for cards to complete this list yourself, you can check out fullgripgames.com. In the description below, we've got tons of singles available there. Make sure to sub to the channel. I hit 40,000 subs. I'm super stoked about that, but looking forward to 50,000 as my next goal. So thank you all so much to everybody who's already subbed to the channel. Y'all rock. Have a great day. Peace.